This video will demonstrate how to design a column splice connection in VA Connect. Let's get started. In this example, the bottom of a W12 by 58 column will be connected to the top of a W12 by 79 column via two bolted flange splice plates. VA Connect assumes that the end of the columns are finished to bear on one another. Full contact bearing is achieved when lighter sections are centered over the heavier sections of the same nominal depth. When the upper column depth is of smaller nominal depth than the lower column depth, unfinished fillers are used to pack out the gap between the column flange and the splice plate. Since no force is transferred by these fillers, they are not included in the column splice design in VA Connect. First, let's apply a weak axis shear and a strong axis shear to the connection in a wind service case. Upon doing so, the project status shows the various limit states that are automatically checked in the program. Note, several of the limit states, like splice plate, tension, yield, and rupture, are grayed out and show a unity value of 0.00. .00. This means that they are currently not applicable for the applied loads. Next, let's apply an axial compressive force to the connection in the dead load service case. Since compressive loads are assumed to transfer in bearing between the end of the columns, adding the compressive force did not influence the unity value for any of the limit states. Finally, we will apply some strong axis moment to the connection in the wind service case. Note, if the moment is small relative to the axial load, both flanges will be in compression and the unity values will not change since the compressive forces are transferred directly between the columns. Further increasing the moment can cause one of the flanges to go into tension, which activates the rest of the limit states. Clicking on the load case manager shows that the load combinations are automatically generated for the selected building code. Now we see that the splice plate is checked for the limit states of shear yield and rupture along with tension yield and tension rupture. Also, bolt shear, bearing, and tearout is checked at the splice plate and at the upper column and lower column flanges. VA Connect uses the elastic method to determine the resultant shear force on each bolt. Since the weak axis shear on the splice joint loads the bolt groups eccentrically, each bolt will have both a rotational shear force and a direct shear force from the weak axis shear. Tension in the splice plates will also load the bolts directly in shear. The vector resultant from these contributing forces is determined for each bolt, and the program determines the maximum shear force for the bolts in the connection. This is compared to the minimum capacity of shear, bearing, and tear out. VIA Connect also checks the splice plates for block shear rupture, considering both rupture patterns for tension and shear, and reports the worst case. Furthermore, block shear interaction is considered when the flange plate is loaded in both shear and tension. When one of the splice plates is in tension, both the upper and lower column flanges will be checked for block shear as well. Finally, let's focus on the two limit states that are failing splice plate flexure yield and splice plate bolt pry out. Clicking on the splice plate flexure yield limit state shows that the plate force bending is a function of the strong axis shear force and the distance between the bolts and the end of the column. VA Connect checks this limit state because the webs of the two columns are not connected to resist strong axis shear. To increase the capacity of the plates, first let's widen the plates to match the flange width of the upper column, and then let's increase the thickness of the plates to 0.5 inches. Since the plate still felt with some flexure, we could either further increase the thickness or use a stronger material like ASTM A572 gray 50 steel. Now the splice plate flexure limit state passes. Also, increasing the width, thickness, and strength of the plate caused the unity value of the splice plate bolt pry out limit state to decrease and it is now failing at a value of just above one. Since the strong axis shear will cause the splice plates to bend and flexure, 
The two bolts closest to the splice plate need to be checked for tension rupture considering the effects of prying. Before we made the three changes to the flange plate, prying action significantly reduced the capacity of the bolts with a Q factor of 0 0.49. Making the splice plate stiffer and stronger significantly lessened the effects of prying with a Q reduction factor going from 0 0.49 to 0 0.93. Also, it's worth noting that in this limit state, the nominal tensile strength of the bolts are modified to include the effects of shear stress. In this case, the nominal tensile stress of 90 KSI has been reduced to 50.4 KSI. Therefore, to increase the capacity of the bolts in tension, we could reduce the shear stresses on the bolts by increasing the gauge of the bolts, which ends up reducing the rotational shear force on the bolts since increasing the gauge gives them a larger lever arm. Now we see the adjusted nominal tensile stress FNT prime has increased from 50.4 KSI to 55 KSI and the limit state passes. Finally, let's check the column splice detailing in which we see a warning that states that the program does not check the splice plate for the interaction between tension, shear, and flexor, which you may want to do depending on your loading situation. With the design complete, we can switch to the report view to easily create a report to document our work. A concise design summary is automatically generated, showing the unity value for each limit state. Also, we can add detailed reports showing the calculations for each limit state, or we can add summary tables for each limit state to the report. In just a few minutes, we have used VA Connect to create an optimal design for a column splice connection, and we have produced a report to document our work. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.